Hello, welcome back to my tech one. A few weeks ago I presented Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printer and since that I'm using it very regularly, I really like it. Uh, I don't really like the 5 minutes preparation time uh, because I always want to weigh that first layer. But uh, since I'm using it I never had a fair print with the PLA <laughs> and I noticed myself that I just start the printing and I leave it. I know this is bad habit, I should always weigh the first layer but um, we will see if this week is a problem. Uh, PTJ tested only that review video. Uh, I had one uh, failed ABS uh, printing where I tried to print something bigger because I don't have enclosure, not even the, the shield uh, panels. Smaller ABS parts I can print because uh, it has some thermal insulation from the heated bed around it. But uh, for bigger parts I had a layer crack and uh, here actually uh, some kind of enclosure is really recommended. Well, actually I plan to install a shield on it, the arc enclosure. I read a lot of good things about it. If you have some other suggestions or maybe where can I buy it in Europe, you can write me if you want in the comment section. And there I also mentioned that I got the AMS2 automatic material system and I will present it in a separate video. Well, this is that video. This is a system which can accept uh, four spools and actually we can combine it even more if we have the hub but it will be placed here on the top of the printer and it can exchange um, automatically the filament so we can have multicolor printing. It is also airtight. Uh, this is good for some hygroscopic filaments like, well, nylon probably will not print nylon on this, uh, but uh, PTG can also have benefit from this because it is also a little bit sensitive to, to uh, moisture from the air. Uh, it has some limitations, so the spool size must be between 50 and 68 millimeters wide and approximately 200 millimeters in diameter. Uh, they don't recommend using a cardboard spools and uh, they don't recommend to using flexible, brittle or abrasive materials. What I'm curious about it actually, the first is the quality, but also I'm curious how much waste materials we have and also uh, what is the time increase uh, in this case, because I read somewhere that uh, for the uh, color changing one layer it needs almost two minutes. Uh, it sounds a little bit much, but um, we will see that soon. Let's see what's in the box. This is the content of the box, this is the unit itself. Filament buffer, some cables, uh, spare cutter, some Teflon tube and user manual. And immediately I can see how airtight is it, I can hear the air when I'm opening. And also we have some reusable spools inside. Ah, this one is for uh, up to 90 degrees Celsius for high temperature filaments which needs a high temperature for the drying like nylon and three other spools can be heated up to 70 degrees Celsius for the lower temperature filaments like uh, PLA and maybe even PTG. These empty spools can be used if you buy separately filament from Bamboo Lab without spool or maybe you want to uh, roll over the filament from cardboard spool or something like that. Now I didn't do my homework on time so it needs a holder for the P1P so I have to print that first which is approximately 3 hours printing and then I will continue the review. What a coincidence, <laughs> first time I experienced the problem with the first layer and it's here, but I will not stop the printing because this is only the brim and I hope the rest of the object will be printed correctly. Well, I'm back from my workplace, printing is finished and I can see interesting uh, warping on all four corners, but it is not so big and I hope it will still be functional. Now I have to remove the supports and it's ready for installing. I'm removing these spools so I can access to these desiccant holders because I want to remove them from the bag and place them back. After this I am pre-installing these um, distancers or holder and placing on the top of the printer and installing this uh, filament buffer with two screws and then installing the Teflon tube and these are the cables 
two cables I have to attach. This one connects the AMS to the buffer. And here you can see the complete line of the filament. And these are the wires. Turning on the printer. And I can see these LEDs are blinking. That's one sign that is connected. And here I can see AMS symbol on the screen. Checking the cables and also I notice this uh, slice of the vibration may, may move it. So I am holding its position with the zip tie. Insecting the spool and pressing down a little bit this uh, opening and then it will take over the action. Same with the second filament. And the uh, filaments are ready for the use. And now let's import an object to Bamboo Studio. I have this D6 dice, 20 mm in size. And I have to answer here no, because this is bug in Fusion 360. It didn't record the unit for each object. So I don't want to be resized in the Bamboo Studio. And only on the last question I have to answer yes, because I want to open this as a single object with multiple parts. I already added another color and I have to change the color for this main body of this dice, which is in this yellow now, the number two in the AMS. And it is ready for the slicing. And then I can export the G-code, save to SD card and ready for printing. Another method to get color printing is to import the object and do paintings on it. And here, for example, I am painting these corners to be in different colors. And then also I will use this flat surface to set it to be in a different color too. But for this video, I'm printing only the first object, the D6 dice. This is again that six minutes uh, preparation time. And after this, it starts with the printing. And I created this time lapse to analyze the layer time and approximately one and a half minutes it needs for the color change in one layer. And here you can see a closer picture from the side. It's finished right on time. It is good to see that uh, the estimated time is correct even with the color printing too. And now let's analyze the quality. Hmm, it is completely removed. As you can see only for this demonstration I use it in offline mode over the SD card, similar I did in the review video of this printer. And I mentioned that I don't like these small TF cards, full size SD cards are better. And then I got several comments that come on, nobody is using this in offline mode. Well actually, for example here in a living room I have only 5 GHz network. And only in my working room, where uh, the position of the printer will be permanent, I have 2.4 GHz uh, over the Wi-Fi extender. For example, my workplace, I couldn't connect this printer to that network because it requires a username too with a password and some special permissions. And another example, I'm quite sure that there are a lot of companies uh, who will not use this in online mode because they don't feel uh, happy that uh, their super secret projects will be stored somewhere in a cloud or something like that. So they will also use the offline mode because of the privacy. But don't worry, I will use it regularly. Only for this demonstration, I have to use it over the SD card. Now let's check the quality. Okay, let's analyze this cube. And this is the first layer. I, I think it looks the best. These are sides and they also look great. Perfect aligning, of course, because we have only one nozzle. And only the top surface is a little bit uglier because these small spots are very small. And otherwise, I think if this area would be bigger, it would be great uh, top layer too. And if I compare it, so this was printed with IDEX printer. And uh, there we have, uh, you know, we have two separate extruders and nozzles and uh, it is very important to align them correctly in X, Y, even in the Z direction. So I can feel, for example, this stands out a little bit. On the other side, it's in. So here it was not perfect. And here we don't have this kind of problems. But there is big difference. See? With IDEX printer, I can print without any waste material. So let's see that now. Let's measure the mass. Not to accurate scale, but it will do the job. So this cube is approximately 3 grams. This waste tower 6 grams. And we are not done yet because we have all these poops. And the total weight is 21 grams. Now the good news is if we print uh, 10 or 20 of these and they can fit on the build plate, we have the same amount of the waste material. 
and similar problem we have with the printing time and here is my chart I did some calculation let's analyze a little bit the numbers so this is the printing of 20 millimeter d6 calibration cube I presented a few minutes ago and uh, I will analyze the printing time and the waste material I have three examples here uh, this uh, d6 dice if I print one object in two colors 10 objects in two colors and 50 objects at a time in two colors Preparation time is the same in all three cases, but of course the 3D printing time is different. And just for comparison, this is the printing time if I print only in single color. And also I calculate this, uh, this is time per object, so I just divided these numbers with the number of the objects and I get these numbers. That's the time I will analyze it later on the graph. And about the waste material, it's in this yellow part. Uh, this is the mass of one object, of course 10 objects, then multiply by 10. The purge material and the waste tower mass is unchanged, equal in all three cases. And then I calculate this waste per object ratio. And this is presented on this graph. Let's analyze this. If I print only one object in two color, I have 11 times more waste material compared to the mass of the object. If I print 10 objects at a time, then the mass of the waste is very similar to mass of the object and if I print 50 objects at a time this number is much smaller. Now let's see the times. Let's see this blue is the single color printing and the red is the multicolor printing. Huge differences so if I print only one ob object at a time almost two hours I need for one dice and 60 minutes if it is in single color. Now, if you analyze this better, if I print 10 objects at a time, this difference is smaller and significantly reduced if I print 50 objects at a time. And if I divide this number per number of the objects, you can see if I print one, then the printing time, of course, it's the same. If I print 10 objects at a time, well, the time is maybe doubled in the color printing case. And if I print 50 objects at a time, then basically this is very, very similar. Just small note here in the single color printing. So here we have 60 minutes, then 9 and 9. And properly this is slowed down because of the minimal layer printing time. The point of this analyzing is to understand, try to use the maximal volume in X and Y direction to get the optimal material and time usage of your CD printer. The difference may be even bigger if you use more than two colors per layer. My next object will be this penguin from Thingiverse. It is in silly color, so I have to download these three files and I am importing them into Bamboo Slicer. Yes, a single object with multiple parts. And then I'm adding here another filament, which is the black color. And uh, then I'm changing the colors for the parts. Don't forget, uh, not the colors important here, but uh, it has to be the same with that one in the AMS system. Object is prepared and after the slicing, I can see that this will be more than a seven hours printing. Colors one, two and three. This part is speed up only five times. I want to show you one and a half minutes for the color change, then 16 seconds for the printing of the prime tower and three seconds for the layer. And again, one and a half minutes until it changed the filament. And in this part, you can see this uh, printing timeline, but speed up uh, 50 times. Printed overnight in the more than seven hours. And the print quality is amazing. Look at this uh, transition between black and white, completely sharp. Maybe one or two very light strings I can see on it, but this is easy to remove. But again, we have that waste material. So this is the prime tower. And these are those poops. And I measured the weight. So here you can see a pie chart. Uh, but I also prepared this one where I calculated if we have uh, 10 pieces at a time. And just for curiosity, I prepared another graph, the printing time per object if I print more than one of these. But of course, the question is if you need several objects. And final thoughts about the AMS. Fantastic piece of engineering, which will give us incredible quality. The best quality in these uh, multicolor systems I tested so far. But prepare that uh, the printing time will be significantly increased.
several hours, sometimes even days. So in most cases, your printing will be finished, I know, overnight or during you are in the school or workplace. And for this, we need a really reliable machine. So far, I didn't have any problems with it, but I am using only several days. Uh, if you have some additional experience with it, uh, let me know uh, down in the comments if you had some fair prints with the simple objects. What are the most co uh, common problems with it? Uh, mostly I'm printing mechanical parts and uh, if I wouldn't have uh, female family members, I wouldn't print figures at all. But um, I'm not used to often anyway, because this is what I'm not happy about. Too much waste material. Of course we can optimize this by using more uh, area in X and Y direction. But uh, I still don't like this system for that reason. Uh, I hope Amber Lab will come out in the near future with some IDEX printer. You know, two separate heads. Two are enough to me. I don't need four and <laughs> 16. In that case, we don't have these uh, flash materials. I hope even the printing time will be faster. During the printing of this penguin, it finished the layer in, I don't know, two seconds, and then it waits uh, one and a half minutes for the filament change. And again, zzz, two seconds for the layer, and again, one and a half minutes for the waiting. As I mentioned, optimizing using more in X and Y direction. But in most cases, I don't need 10 of these. I need only one. So for the end, great system if you need multicolor printers, but uh, you have to be patient. And if you have some additional experience, you know a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.